The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. It is interesting that we find ourselves on a mountain, tradition says Mount Tabor, all because of a question that Jesus asks his disciples. Who do people say that I am? After listening to their response, Jesus asks another question. Who do you say that I am? It is all about identity, because in understanding who Jesus is, they will also know who they are. Peter answers correctly and boldly, so Jesus brings them more deeply into a greater understanding of that identity. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Rise again after three days. What amazing news. Yet the apostles get stuck in the suffering part just like we often do. It's not part of their plan. As if they, it's as if they don't even hear Jesus say he would rise again. And Peter wants nothing to do with this plan. No, Lord. And he rebukes him. Doesn't Jesus' response send chills up our spine, even after hearing it for many years? Get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but men. Then Jesus shares more challenging news. If they want to be authentic disciples, they will also be called to deny themselves, pick up their cross, and follow him. This means a vulnerability and complete surrender of their own lives and the lives of their families. In St. Mark's Gospel, we hear, For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospel 
will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Wow, what a lot to take in. And Jesus knows this. He is mercy and kindness. He knows this is really the most challenging of his teachings. However, the apostles must get this if they are to know Jesus' true identity and mission so that they will understand their own identity and mission. Jesus brings Peter, James, and John up a mountain to pray and to strengthen them. He wants them to have hope and something to remember when the dark day comes. Suddenly, on top of the mountains, Jesus' body is transfigured. He was transfigured before them, and his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. In other words, it was not man-made. It was divine. His glory is shining forth and the light that overcomes all darkness. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 568, explains it this way. Christ's transfiguration aims at strengthening the apostles' faith in anticipation of his passion. The ascent onto the high mountain prepares for the ascent of Mount Calvary. Christ, head of the church, manifests what his body contains and radiates in the sacraments the hope and glory. The mystery of the transfiguration strengthens us as well. Although the crucifixion has already taken place, Jesus reminds his disciples that we too must deny ourselves, carry our cross, and follow in his footsteps. My brothers and sisters, if we choose to answer God, Jesus' call and invitation to discipleship, it is a one-way road. Did you hear that? It's a one-way road. It is a one-way road to Calvary, and it is the only way to heaven. All followers of Jesus Christ must take this path of the cross. But remember, it is also the path that leads to God's kingdom and his glory. Not just the momentary glory of the transfiguration, but a sharing and the resurrection glory for eternity, forever. Trying to get there without taking the road to Calvary brings us to the confusion, misunderstandings, and darkness that our world and even our church is so steeped in today. Friday evening, my heart was very heavy. I have tried to stop looking at the news, not just for Lent, but for my health and well-being. I looked a couple times. Every time I look, it seems to be bad news. If you watch the news and see good news, please email it to me. I lamented to Jesus as I was sitting in front of him in our chapel from the Blessed Sacrament. When are you going to do something? The weight of it is all unbearable. What did I see in only one week? The few times I dared to look. The House of Representatives voted on Thursday to pass the Equality Act. They always choose words that sound so kind. Equality. Who wouldn't want equality for people? We are called to love everyone and hold up the dignity of every human being. We see every human being as created in the image and likeness of God. So what's the issue? There's more than what meets the eye. 
If the bill goes to law, many experts say it will have detrimental effects on freedom of religion and the church's ability to preach the truth in love. Churches would be forced to accept morals contrary to their teachings or suffer the consequences. Then, I watched the nominee for Assistant Health Secretary picked by this current administration. As I listened to this person speak and the lies that came forth, I was filled with sadness and outrage. This person's view on gender dysphoria for our children is extremely disturbing. Pope Francis has called these actions outright abuse. We are talking about children. <clears throat> we have many laws to protect children because they are children <clears throat> and not fully developed to make certain decisions. Who is protecting our children? Then in California, they are trying to make a law that if a store has a separate boys and girls section, it could be fined up to a thousand dollars. And then finally, I saw more racial discussions that seem to only incite and cause more disunity and division instead of healing and unity that they keep claiming they desire and that we desperately need. So you can see my heavy heart Friday night. I even had the temptation, why bother preaching on Sundays? Look at the world. Look at parts of the church. No one's listening. What's the point? Maybe I should read something nice from Hallmark or bring back Kumbaya. Well, it was a temptation. Sensing it was a temptation, I picked up the rosary and meditated on the sorrowful mysteries written by St. Jose Maria Escriva. I was strengthened when I read the following. Kneeling on the hard ground, he perseveres in prayer. He weeps for you and for me. The weight of the sins of men overwhelms him. The weight of the sins of men overwhelms him. In that moment, I realized that Jesus was allowing me to share in his sufferings. He was calling on me to comfort him. He was allowing me to experience a very small part of what he experienced in the agony of the garden. All of the issues this week that I brought to him that night, all my lamenting to him, he was already suffering that in the agony of the garden. As I continue to the scourging and then crown of thorns, St. Jose Maria writes, the clamor of the mob whose voice gets louder and louder. Can you hear those voices today when they hate the message of Jesus and the gospel truth? Do you hear the mockery when we teach the identity of Jesus in a human person and the gospel truths of Jesus Christ? Right now, they shout, cancel them, cancel them. How much longer before they shout, crucify them, crucify them. And the fourth sorrowful mystery, San Jose Maria writes, see how lovingly he embraces the cross. Learn from him. Jesus carries the cross for you. Carry it for Jesus, but don't drag the cross. 
carry it squarely on your shoulder because your cross, if you carry it like that, will not just be any cross. It will be the Holy Cross. Don't carry your cross with resignation. Resignation is not a generous word. Love the cross. When you really love it, your cross will be a cross without a cross. And you will find Mary on the way just as Jesus did. How much I realize I carry the cross, I drag the cross with resignation and not with love. What about you? The last sorrowful mystery, Jesus dies on the cross. Saint Jose Maria writes, now he is on high. Foolish child, look, all this he has suffered, all for you and for me. Can you keep from crying? My brothers and sisters in Christ, the apostles found strength on the mountain and the mystery of the transfiguration. It is a mystery for us to enter as well and be strengthened and consoled. Meditate on it when darkness overshadows your life. But there is even a greater gift. We find our ultimate strength not on Mount Tabor, but on the heights of Mount Calvary. It is the cross we must hold on to. It is the cross we must love. It is the cross we must embrace. It is the cross that opens us to the glory of God's kingdom here on earth and for all eternity. It is from the heights of Mount Calvary that we come to know Jesus' true identity and mission and in sharing in his passion, come to know our identity and our mission as well. It is from the Holy Cross that light overcomes all the darkness in the world and all the darkness in our lives. And it is from the Holy Cross that water and blood gushed forth from Jesus' side. The water signifies the sacrament of baptism in which we are saved and come to know who Jesus is and who we are. And the precious blood that flowed out signifies the Eucharist, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. We entered the holy sacrifice of the Mass and are fed, strengthened, and become true holy worshipers of the Father. And so, from the cross, we too hear the Father say, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Regina Jenny, let our rain, alleluia, qui aque menu misti portare, alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia, ora pro nobis Deus.